Okay, so welcome to this introduction on creating a Cerebral app. We're going to create a very simple app. Uh, it's the one included in the boilerplate, which is just an input. And when you change that input and hit enter, uh, that text will appear in a list below and the input is emptied. Uh, so I've created just a basic component here, which says hello world. Uh, so if we move into our code, we can see that in our app folder, we have a components folder and that has the app component, which just states hello world. Uh, we also have just some CSS here. And since we're using Webpack, we are able to just import that CSS um, and it will be injected as a style into the header of the document. Uh, we also have React here and our app component, which is rendered into the document uh, on a div called uh, with the ID of app. So what we're going to do now is first create our Cerebral. And my convention is to create a file called Cerebral. And we, of course, have to import Cerebral. And we will create that uh, Cerebral by passing an object. This object would just have a state called input value, which is empty, and a list state, which is an array. Uh, so we will export this Cerebral. And now we will uh, use this in our main file. And we do that by importing Cerebral from Cerebral. And what we're going to do now is inject this Cerebral into our application. And that will return a wrapper uh, that we will uh, render instead of the app. Now this uh, wrapper will expose the Cerebral on the context of your React application. It will also uh, insert the debugger uh, when not in a production environment. So let us inject uh, inject into app and we will use the wrapper here instead. So when I say that now, uh, oops, a typo, wrapper. You see that when uh, I did that save, it automatic automatically refreshes and we have the debugger. The automatic refresh is part of the boilerplate and, and webpack. So now we have uh, the Cerebral available on the context of our application. So what we're going to do now is just move into app and we are going to uh, just create the input. And we use a form for that since we're going to hit the enter uh, to submit the text. Oops, type text. And let's just save that. And now we see that the input is available. Okay, so what we're going to do now is grab the input value state from the Cerebral. And to make that available, we have to use a mixin. And that mixin can be uh, grabbed just like that. And since we're using ES6 class syntax, uh, we have to call this mixin and pass in the app as we export it. That will uh, make that component able to grab state from the Cerebral. And the way it does that is by defining a method called getCerebralState. Now this get cerebral state method can return either an array uh, like that, or it can return an object where the key is the key you want to use to grab the state and the value is the path. Uh, but since we just have a very simple state here, I'm going to use an array. So to grab that state, uh, I simply use this state input value. Okay, so now it uses the state inside the Cerebral. <clears throat> and when I save this now, uh, and I try to type something, uh, nothing actually happens. And that's because in the Cerebral, the text is always empty. So I cannot do these changes. Uh, what we have to do now is make sure that when we actually change the input, we change the state uh, value of input, uh, input value inside the Cerebral. So let us take this uh, step by step. Uh, first of all, we can create a signal because we want this component to be able to trigger a signal and pass in the current value of the input. And that signal should then uh, trigger an action 
which will actually put that uh, text from the input into the cerebral input value state. Um, so what we do is define a signal here, and you simply do that by calling signal. And we can call that uh, just input changed, uh, because the name has to be what happened, it not what should it do. Um, so what happened was that the input changed, and what we want to trigger is uh, set input value. That's a good name for an action. And we can grab that action from, let's see, from actions uh, set input value.js. Okay, but before we save this, let's create this action and new folder actions. And let's create a file called set input value.js. Uh, and that will just be a function. And let's just export that, and save that, and save our main JS file. So what happens is that we're now going to uh, pass the title to the signal, and that signal uh, will pass it to the action, and the action will actually put that uh, text into the um, uh, input value state. So let us start by working in our component. And what we want to happen here is that on change, we will say on in, uh, sorry, this on input change. Uh, and we have to bind this as we're doing ES6 class syntax. And uh, uh, on input change, we will receive an event. And when we use this mixin, the cerebral mixin, we do not only have access to the state, we also have access to the signals. So let's say this the signals input changed and let's pass in the target value. Okay, so now that's ready. Um, we can create our action. So this signals triggers with the value of the input. The signal will pass it to the action. And if we go into our action, the first argument will always be the cerebral itself. And the next argument will actually be the, uh, the value of the input. So what we can do now is call cerebral with a set mutation. We point to our input value state and it should now be value like that. So now we see the one way flow we know from flux. So we change something in the component, we pass it to a signal uh, which goes through an action, which does the mutation. And that will in turn trigger an update that this component will um, listen to or does listen to. And it will extract the new value of input value and it will put that into the input. So let's see that now in action. Uh, I can actually type some text here. And as you can see, our debugger is starting to, to understand our application. So it sees that, okay, we have a signal called input changed and it has one action called set input value and it does a set mutation on input uh, on the input value state. Uh, and already we can start moving back and forth in time, though our application is currently quite simple. So you probably don't have uh, such a strong need for that. Um, but let's um, move on and create some more logic. So what we want to do now is when the form is, um, is submitted, we want to actually put the current text of the input into a list and then empty the input. So let's say on submit, we say this on input submit. Um, and we have to create the method on input submit. This will also receive an event from the form, which we want to prevent the fault on, so, don't, so the form does not refresh the page. And we want to trigger a new signal called um, input submitted, like that. And we do not have to pass anything because 
the action that is going to put uh, the text into the list will just grab the current state from the cerebral itself. So let us save that now and let's create this signal. Uh, cerebral signal input submitted and this will uh, uh, add a value to list for example and we have to import that add value to list from actions add value to list and we have to create this action add value to list js add value to list and it's just a function which receives the cerebral export default add value to list and as i said this will just use the current state of um, input value to add to the list. Um, so we point to cerebral and we want to do a push mutation on the list. And what it's going to use is the input value currently available in the cerebral. And then we also want to run a set mutation on the input value to empty out the uh, to empty out uh, the input. So we do that, we save that, and we also save our main.js file. And as you can see now, it actually kept, as it refreshed, it actually kept our previous state. And what's really nice about this is that now I can just hit enter. And we, of course, forgot to bind the uh, the form method, which is a typical thing to do when you work with ES6 classes. So let's go down to our form and bind it to this. And now again, it still has the state and we hit enter. And now it actually added it to the list as we can see here in the debugger. We pushed it to list and it emptied out the um, uh, input, uh, input value. And what's really cool now is that I can actually click list here and we can see down in the console that, okay, it actually did push it to the, to the array. But now of course we want to display this. So if we move back to, uh, back to the app, we want to create a UL element here and we want to map over the list. So let us make sure that we have this list available by grabbing it from the cerebral. And what we're going to do is say this state list map. Let's just call it render item. Uh, and we do not need to bind that because we're not going to use anything in the component. But let's see, render item, and we will get the item. We will also get the index. And what we're going to do is just return an li element where the key is index and we will just put in the item there. Okay, so I'm going to save that. And when it now refreshes, it remembered the previous state and now we actually see it appear in the list. And now you start to see what kind of workflow you can get building your application. You don't have to re reproduce the state all the time. Uh, and that makes things really, really effective when you develop. So basically this is our application. So I can now go in, I can add more stuff to this. I can reset the state in the debugger. And um, yeah, this is basically it. And I hope you got an impression of how it, uh, how it works. Uh, developing with Cerebral, you get this uh, really nice uh, overview of how your state flows, it remembers the state, and that just gives a, a pretty amazing workflow. So thank you for listening to and watching this video, and I hope you will try out uh, Cerebral.